I used the hot water wisely. I didn't know how long it would be before I got more. Very carefully, I cleaned his wound. Hallelujah. The purple flower acted as an antibody, and it kept the wound from becoming infected. I smiled as I worked. It never ceased to amaze me how Abiyah worked. I had learned at an early age not to question when he leads me somewhere. So even now, even though I was scared out of my mind. If he led me here, it was for a reason. After I cleaned the wound the best I could, I used the tweezers and took out the bullet. That was hard work. Sweat dripped down my brow as I carefully took it out, being very careful not to damage anything else. Hallelujah, it was only a flesh wound. The bullet did not bother his kidneys. Once I got it out, I cleaned the wound again. Digging in my pocket, I took out the root and the leaves I picked from the tree. The leaves lit up for me. I took them, added a little water, used my hand to turn them into a paste, then carefully packed the wound with the paste. With dealing with these kinds of injuries, I like to use comfrey root. But of course, I didn't have any available. Back home, Nuri, I grew them by the bucket load for me. But, no doubt, this will work just as well. If the father revealed it to me, then it was good. I stuffed the root back in my pocket. I didn't know what I had to do with it, but I had no doubt I would find out. I wrapped the bandage around him and lay down next to him, putting my hand over the wound. And then I began to pray. Ah, oh, Dota, your hand, it's hot. It's burning me. I sat up coming awake instantly. Dawid looked up at me. I kissed his forehead. So glad to see him. His eyes alert. Hallelujah. Tears came to my eyes. He was awake. Where are we? He whispered. I looked around. In some kind of dungeon. He nodded, closing his eyes. Are you going back to sleep? I asked him. He shook his head. Listening was all he said. After a while, he spoke. They're going to kill us when Gideon comes home. He spoke without opening his eyes. I think he is some kind of mercenary. They say he has been gone for two weeks, he and his men. They are expecting him home next week. They say he is going to cut me up in little pieces and boil me in a pot. I looked down at Dawid, shaking my head. That, that's not going to happen. He opened his eyes. I tried to get us away from here. I just wasn't strong enough. If only I was like my dad. Shh, shh. No, baby. You were so brave. You carried me so far. You're only 14. There is no other 14-year-old in the world that could do that or would do that. If not for you, I probably would have been, been dead by now. You saved your daughter's life. I kissed his head again. Rest, baby. I'll see about getting us some food or something. He slept. And when he awoke again, complaining about my hands, he still had no food. It was hard to tell how much time had gone by. A day? Two? The guards had bought a pot in for us to use the bathroom. Let me tell you, not a pleasant experience. They didn't even come to empty it out. I'm hungry, Dora. Oh, yeah, help me. I didn't know what to tell this baby. I was hungry too. I pulled the root out of my pocket. It was lit. Hallelujah. I put it to Dawi's lip. His sweetheart, 
Take a small bite. I don't know how long this will last. We have to make it stretch. He took a bite and chewed. Mmm, it tastes like apples. I smiled. Dawid and Nuria, between the two of them, it was an apple safe within a hundred yards. What about you, he asked. I shook my head. No, baby, I'm not hungry right now. Forgive me, Father Yafalan. I just didn't have the heart to tell him that if one of us had to starve, then I preferred it to be me. He was so loving and caring that he would disturb his wound to try and get me to eat some, too. More days passed. At least it felt like it. Dawi was getting stronger. Hallelujah for that. He could now sit up and go to use that nasty bucket toilet by himself. He had eaten the last of the root this morning. At least what I thought was this morning. Then something happened. The guard came to the cell. You, he said pointing at me. Come. I stood and helped Dawi to his feet. No, no, not him. Just you. He came in to the cell and grabbed my arm, pulling me out. Hey man, let her go. Dawi came at the guard. I stepped in front of him. No doubt, if he had his full strength, he could take this guard with no problem. But he didn't. No D, just, just let me go and see what's going on. I'll be back, I promise. I followed the guard up out of the cell. The sun was so bright, I had to use my hand to block it out. The guard pushed me across the yard and into the castle. The house was in a frenzy. Servants ran to and fro. Hey, is that her? The guard nodded. I turned to see a beautiful woman coming towards me. Because I didn't know where we were, I couldn't say if she was Puerto Rican or Cuban or Dominican. However, she was definitely Hispanic. She wore her long brown hair and curls that fell down her back. I reached for my locks. They were so dirty, I didn't even recognize them. Hey, you, all hands are needed. The master and his men are coming home today. Juanita called in sick, so I need you to go upstairs and do the upstairs floor. They have to be mopped. I stood blinking at her. Are you deaf? Ew, she said when she got close to me. Take her to the river and let her wash. She stinks. And then I want her on the third floor mopping and dusting. She spoke to a pretty girl that stood behind me. Yes, Madam Elena. She approached me with a smile on her face. Miss, please, can you come with me? I nodded following her. I turned to look back at Elena and was surprised to see her standing there with her eyes narrowed watching me leave. The girl led me through the kitchen, down a set of stairs to where the servants' room were. She stopped at her own. Uno momento. I will get a change of clothes for you. She disappeared through the door. When she reappeared, she had a towel, shampoo, soap, and what looked like an old gray dress. That's my room if you ever need anything. My name is Rosa. She whispered before leading me back up the stairs, through the huge kitchen, and out the back door. We walked across the yard, passing a barn and a stable they looked like it housed 20 horses, maybe more. We passed through the gate. She waved at the guard. He nodded at her, but he looked at me. We went into the trees. Instantly, several things lit up for me. I looked at Rosa. Maybe I'll try and come back here later. However, I reached down and plucked up a handful of those little purple flowers. You know, the ones that served as an antibody? They were doing a good job at keeping away the infection in Dawid's womb. We walked down a hill. I knew we were getting close to the river because I could hear the water. I exhaled when we cleared the trees and came to a beautiful little river. There was a woman washing her daughter in the, at the other end. I turned my back and you, you, if you want, I'll help you wash your hair. I nodded. She turned her back. I looked around. Except for the woman washing her daughter, it looked like we were all alone. I needed to wash so badly. Quickly, I took off my clothes, grabbed the soap and the towel, and ran into the water. I made quick work of washing my body. And true to her word, Rosa hiked up her dress and came into the water to help me wash my hair. It is so long, she said. And pretty, it's so soft, too. 
she as she said as she lathered my waist length locks up it felt so good to have her hands scrubbing my scalp I almost fell asleep right there in the water when she finished I dipped down in the water rinsing off all the soap when I came up the smile left Rose's face what is it I asked this is not good she motioned to my face underneath all that dirt was this oh no miss this is not good I don't understand I said quickly putting on the gray dress it was so big it was way too big it instantly fell off my shoulder I shoved it back up what is the irony Nuria was just asking me had I ever worn anything off the Walmart rack I had laughed and turned my nose up at that. Now here I found myself wearing something that was so old and worn, I think it was probably created before Walmart. It was so old and worn that it really showed off the fact that I didn't have on any underclothes underneath it. Goodness, this is what I got. But hallelujah, it was clean. Rosa was still stressing over something I didn't understand. Rosa, what's the matter? I asked. I wrapped my long locks in the towel, trying to dry them. It was not nearly big enough. I dropped it, grabbing my locks to wring them out instead. You are too pretty. You're prettier than the mistress. If she sees you, she's going to get rid of you. I frowned. Who? Elena? Si, senor. But Rosa, she already saw me. She clicked her tongue, shaking her head. But she don't see you like this. She's seen you covered in dirt. Clean. You are, you are amazing. You're the prettiest woman I ever seen. She frowned. Come, she said, picking up my old clothes. I reached down, picking up the purple flowers, stuffing them in my pocket. Shh. Rosa needed to get out more. If I was the prettiest woman she ever seen, please. We just, we just won't let her see you, she mumbled, as she led me in the side door and up the, to the third floor. She gave me a mop, a mop bucket, some soap, and told me to stay up here and out of the mistress' way, and I should be okay. So, yeah, and I found myself in a situation. See, I had no idea how to mop a floor. I needed to get back down and check on Dawid and something was being cooked in the kitchen downstairs that reminded me I haven't eaten in days, I think. And I was wearing this thin cotton dress with no underwear that wouldn't stay off on my shoulder. But something else came to my attention right then. Rosa had left me all alone, alone to find a phone. I looked around. This place was huge. Servants now ran back and forth with towels, pots, pans, whatever. Some of them looked at me, but they were too busy to stop and stare. Everybody moved in a frenzy, trying to get the house ready for the master. I chuckled to myself as I casually made my way to the door closest to me. Who still used words like master anyway? If I found a phone and called lion, your master was going to get hurt. I turned the knob, trying to look like I had business there. The door was locked. Dang it. I moved the mop back and forth as I made my way to the next door. This was a huge hall. I guess it should be, seeing as it is in a dang-on castle, right? It was nice, too. It looked like an old Spanish castle on the outside, but on the inside, it was beautiful with all its archways. There were a lot of windows that had curtains open that blew in the wind. It was really pretty. And surprisingly, it was very modern on the inside. Anyway, it took me a minute to get to the next door. People were passing, looking at my drop mop crazy, but I just kept on going like I knew exactly what I was doing. My daddy always told me, it ain't what you do, it's how you do it. And plus, they were too busy to stop anyway. I don't understand what the big deal was. They were acting like this guy was the freaking king of England or something. There was a hall that led to a double doors at the back. I stood mopping watching as a couple of people came out 
shutting the doors behind them. That was definitely a hot spot. And the door wasn't locked. I leaned my mop against the banister and walked toward the door with purpose, like I had business there. I turned the knob thrilled when it opened. Then I quietly slipped in, shutting and locking the door behind me. I turned around and was amazed to see it was a huge bedroom. I mean, this bad boy had a sitting room and everything. Shoot, the King of England wish he lived this good. Phone, phone. I looked around for a phone, but my eyes landed on a table that was full of food, and they went no further. Oh, goodness. My stomach growled so loud, my dad probably heard it back in Chicago. My feet had a mind of their own, and their destination was that table. Although my mind screamed for me to go for the phone, my stomach began to sing a different song. I reached the table, and the first thing I saw was the fried chicken. Oh, yeah, I said, doing a little dance, before I picked up a leg and tore in it. The dress slipped down my shoulder, but I didn't even care. My stomach was a pressing issue. I don't think I ever been this hungry. You know, I have fasted before, but not this many days. I took another bite out of the chicken. Then I spotted mango slices. Mango slices, yes please, I sang before picking up a piece of the juicy fruit, popping it in my mouth. Mmm, the fruit just exploded in my mouth. My eyes brightened when I saw what looked like mashed potatoes. Heck, I didn't see no spoon, so I dipped the mango slice in the mashed potatoes. Oh man, I closed my eyes moaning. This was so good. I took another bite of chicken. And then I went in for the greens. There was yams. Oh Father, yeah, I moaned again. I wrapped a breast and a wing in a napkin and put it in my pocket for Dawid and a roll. Then I picked up the roll, a roll for myself and took a bite. It was warm and soft and buttery. Oh! Well, damn. I believe this is the first time I've ever seen a woman make love to her food. The sound of that deep voice scared the heck out of me. The chicken, mango, strawberry, mashed potato combination I had in my hand went flying as I turned to see where the voice was coming from. Across the room, in a small alcove, was a jacuzzi in the floor. And sitting in the jacuzzi was a man. A big man, a man with dark skin and long wet hair. He sat with his massive arms up on the side of the big tub. His face, oh, oh my goodness, his face. My hand came to my chest as if that alone would keep my heart from leaping out. His face was beautifully fierce and and oh goodness, he was, he was frowning at me. I mean, really? frowning at me. That's when I heard the low growl coming from my right. I turned and there squatting down ready to rip my throat out was the biggest black dog I had ever seen. Oh please, please get your dog, I cried. It's not a dog. My eyes flew back to him. He still sat relaxed in the tub while I was about to become this dog's dinner. What is it? It growled at me again. I eased up on the table, watching it closely. The question you should be asking is what you will be if you don't tell me why you are here in my room eating my meal. Um, um, I began to scoop, scoop backward on the table toward the door. I am very sorry. I thought this was the cafeteria. I chuckled nervously looking around and then hit my head with my palm. Obviously, I'm in the wrong place. I shot off the table and made a run for the door. Wolf, stop her! The big dog leaped over my shoulder and, I, and was now standing in front of the door, growling at me, baring his vicious teeth. Wolf, did 
Did you did you say wolf? I squeaked without turning around. I could hear him standing and stepping out of the tub. Yeah, wolf. I turned to the side to look at him so that I could still keep one eye on the wolf. He was wrapping a big white fluffy towel around his waist. The sun coming through the window reflected just right off his wet, massive bare chest. My hand went back to my heart. Oh my. The whole time my eyes were taken in his body, he was doing the same thing to mine. And that's when I realized the dress was hanging so low on my shoulder, it showed the top curve of my right breast. I lift it, looking down at the floor in Barris. Slowly, he walked toward me. I took a few steps back, but stopped when I heard that angry growl behind me. Still frowning fiercely, the big man came to stop in front of me, invading my space. He took me in, so fully, my hair, my face, my braless chest. I crossed my arms. I am a full chested woman and I really didn't have any business walking around without a bra. At this point, I was blushing so bad that I knew I was probably beat red. Dang my light skin. I couldn't take the intensity of his gaze, so I looked off to the side. Won't you have a seat? and uh, help yourself. He finally spoke. I eased into the chair nearest me, ready to do anything to get from under that gaze. I'm gonna go get dressed, then I'll join you. He disappeared through a door that I could only assume was his closet. I got to my feet to get out of here, but I came up short because that big black wolf now sat on his hind legs right in front of the door. He growled at me. Okay. I threw my hands up and then eased back into my chair. Oh man, I, I done gone and done it now. I should have just stayed out there in the hall, dry mopping the floor. He returned, wearing a pair of jeans, a white tank top, a shoulder holster that held two gold guns underneath his well muscled arms. He had put his long black hair in a ponytail that hung down to the middle of his back. And on his feet, he wore a pair of brown tins. I frowned. Dad, he put me in the mind of someone else. I just couldn't think of who. Shoot, I couldn't think of much. Because instead of him sitting in the chair opposite of mine, as was proper, he pulled the chair out kitty corner to mine, bringing him closer than what was comfortable for me. He got two plates, sitting one in front of me, before piling it high with food, then he did the same for himself. I stared at the plate. Go ahead. Just a minute ago, you ate as if you hadn't ate in days. Don't get shy now. Keeping a weary eye on him, I picked up a piece of the cantaloupe, putting it in my mouth. The juice just exploded from the food. I moaned. That was so good. My stomach growled. It wanted me to stop playing around and eat. So, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I picked up the chicken. I took a bite before spooning two big helpings of potatoes in my mouth. I watched him as I chew, my cheeks so full of food that I stuffed in my mouth. He watched me. When is the last time you ate, he asked. I shrugged, picking up a roll and lathered it with butter. Oh yeah. I took a bite. Oh wow, it was honey butter. That's when I saw the apple. Dawee would love that. I reached for it, then I realized that maybe I was being greedy. I looked at him, smiling slightly. His eyes narrowed. Can I have it? I asked him. Still staring at me, as he slowly chewed, he nodded his head. I put the apple in my pocket to the, join the chicken and the roll I had for Dawid. What's your name? He asked, his deep voice making me feel so uncomfortable. I squirmed in my chair. I had to get out of here. Safia, I whispered, and uh, I have to get back to work. He looked at me surprised. Where do you work? Here. 
His eyes went from my face to my neck, where that stupid dress was hanging off my shoulder again, down to my breast. Blushing so embarrassed, I eased the dress back up on my shoulder. But I've never seen you around here. I shook my head standing. It's, uh, it's because I just got here. Um, can you tell your pet to move, please? I asked, looking down at him. He still sat eating. He was now looking at me rather straight ahead. Wolf, move. The animal walked away from the door, and I was through it without looking back. I made my way back to the dungeon, managing to avoid the mistress. I wondered who that man was I had just had lunch with. He was quite... Quite... Mm, I don't really know what word described him most. Powerful? Yes, definitely powerful. Handsome? Yes, but in a fierce way. You know, not like some guys that's so handsome they're pretty. No, 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 not this man. He was manly handsome, you know? Hard edges, no softness. His hands were big and bruised like he used them to hit a lot. His knuckles had been killed and busted so many times. And those guns, gold, and they were big. And you can tell they were a part of him. He was a gunman. I approached the fat guard. He took his time opening the bars for me. I was so glad to see Dawi sitting up against the wall. After the guard walked away, I pulled out the chicken in the road. His eyes lit up. Thank you, Dodai, he said before he ripped into the chicken. Seconds later, there was only bones left. I smiled at him. I got a surprise for you. What, he asked. I pulled the apple out of my pocket. Oh, he said, taking the apple like I had just handed him the rarest diamond in the world. I laughed watching him eat it, but then he stopped and slowly stood. And so did I. Just in time to see that man I had had lunch with bending to walk through the cell bars that the guard had just opened for him. His frown was, was now frightening. I stepped in front of Dawid. But he pushed me to the side of him, then behind him. The man watched the whole exchange, the frown on his face growing fiercer. They say you took down eight guards while carrying this woman. Is that correct? Dawi held up his head but said nothing. Answer me, boy! The man roared. I screamed, clutching Dawi to me. Tears came to my eyes. The big black wolf stepped through the door. Crouching low, growling at Dawid. You don't scare me, man, Dawid said. No, baby, Dawid, no. I tried to step in front of him, but he managed to keep me behind him with one hand. Don't listen to him. He's been injured. He don't know what he's saying. The man smiled. What? You think you can take me? Is that it? He asked Dawid. My nephew held his head higher. If I have to. That smile turned deadly on the man's face. He walked towards Dawid, grabbing him by the throat, snatching him up off his feet, holding him straight up in the air by his throat with one hand. Now y'all, Dawid was not no small boy. He was tall and well muscled. So the fact that this man held him in the air with one hand spoke volumes. I felt like I was in the twilight zone, as if I was looking at the dark, evil version of lion. Isn't this what your father did to my brother? He asked, shaking Dawi like a rag doll. After I got over my shock at seeing his strength, I jumped into action. He was slowly killing Dawi. Please, please, Gideon, Gideon, are you Gideon? I asked, gently touching the arm he used to hold Dawi up in the air. Gideon, please, please, please stop. Tears were running down my face. Dawid's eyes were rolling in the back of his head. Gideon, I cried. Please, you're, you're killing him. He tossed Dawid across the cell as if he was a small children's ball before he turned to look at me, his angry eyes shooting fire at me. What about my brother? He roared in my face, causing the bars to rattle. I brought my hands up to my ears, closing my eyes. That's when I felt his hands on my arms lifting me in the air. 
What about my brother? He yelled up in my face. I was crying like a little girl because being on the other end of this force, this strength, this anger made me feel like a little girl. I'm sorry I cried. I'm sorry for your loss. Please get in. You're hurting me. He breathed through his nostrils like an angry bull. Slowly, he set me on my feet. He looked down at me, still breathing heavy. His eyes traveled down my neck, across my bare shoulder, then back up to my eyes, before he turned and slammed out the bars, sending the heavy metal flying across the cell to bang so hard into the stone wall, it left a nice size hole in it. The fat guard stood with his back flat against the wall, making sure he was out of Gideon's way as he passed. I stood there for a minute, staring at their hole in the wall, trying to collect myself. Dora, Dawi said from where he had been thrown and knocked unconscious. The loud bang of the metal hidden against the wall had awakened him. I ran to where he lay, clutching his wound. Dawi, baby, are you okay? He nodded, struggling to sit up. I helped him. He's like my dad, ain't he? He asked. I turned to look back at the stone wall with the bended metal sti bar sticking out of it. I nodded my head. Yeah, yeah he is. He shook his head. He's gonna kill me. I shook my head fiercely. No baby, he ain't. Don't I promise you that. I hugged him close.